What's up guys, this is John from the Lucky Needle and today we got some busted seams in our car. Nobody wants to see a busted seam, that's just disgusting. We got one right down here and we got two behind us. I'm going to show you guys two different ways to fix this. One of the ways, you don't even need a sewing machine because I know everybody out there is already thinking, oh yeah, that's nice, you're going to show us how to fix the, the busted seam, but I don't even know how to sew. Stick around and I'm going to show you two simple ways how you can fix this yourself. The first thing that we need to do is take out this seat from the car because we need to take off the cover so that we can get to the seam and actually fix it. On most newer cars, all we have to do for this bottom cushion is just lift this up and there's two pressure clips that hold these in and we can take this right out of the car. Now make sure that on your car that that's actually how it is. Sometimes, you know, maybe there's some bolts or something holding it in and you don't want to accidentally break your seat or something. So be careful while you're doing this and now we can take this out of the car. All right, now that we got that cushion out, what we need to do is take out these bolts that are holding in the backrest here. And it looks like we're also going to have to remove these this seat belt here on all three of these just so we can get that cushion out cuz it looks like it's going to maybe be in our way while we're taking this out. So I'm going to start doing that now. Okay, now what we need to do is climb inside the trunk and there's these two latches that hold on the top of the backrest. We just need to take a screwdriver and pop the mechanism open and that's going to release the latch and let us pull that backrest out. Now it's pretty easy, you can see you just need a screwdriver there. It's just kind of difficult here because I'm trying to hold a camera and a flashlight and there's not very much room inside this trunk. So you can see here how the seats popped loose. Now we need to do the other side because there's two of them and then we can take this out of the car. Once you unhook the latches inside the trunk, you can just pull the seat forward and then lift it up because there's these two little hooks that it goes into on the side of the car. And then you can just take this out and we're ready to start fixing the seam. Okay, now we got these seats out of the car. What we need to start doing is pulling the covers off. And I'm going to show you how to do this on this car. But just so you guys know, it might be different on whatever project you're working on. So just be smart and you'll figure out how to get your cover off. So I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver here to pop out all these arrow clips that are sewn onto the cover here. So we're just going to get this out of the way here and it looks like there's a couple of staples we're going to have to pull out right here, but that's okay, not a problem. Now I'm just going to finish up removing the rest of this seat cover. So this cover is held on by some hog rings right here to give it that nice shape we see here on the bolsters. And uh, basically what we're going to have to do is cut off these hog rings. Now, you probably have a pair of dikes around the house. You can definitely use these to get them off. I like to use these little small bolt cutters just because it's easier on my hands. So we're going to cut all these off so we can remove the cover. All right, now I'm gonna get started on removing the backrest cover. And it's basically the same way as the cushion that we just did. Here I'm just pulling out the fold-up armrest. It has some clips and some screws that are holding this in. And on this seat, it was a little bit difficult to get the slides for the headrest out. One of the things I had to do was peel back the trunk lining on the back of the seat here so I could get access to the bolts for the bracket that are holding the headrest slides on and you'll see exactly what I'm doing as I go through this here. So once you get access to the headrest slides, it's pretty easy. You just have to push in the two clips and they'll slide right out. The problem is when 
the bracket and everything is bolted to the seat frame and the foam and the cover and everything is on, it's really difficult to get to. That's why we had to unbolt everything the way we did. Okay, for those of you out there that don't have an actual sewing machine, I'm going to show you how to fix these ripped seams by hand. It's a little bit more work, but you can actually do this at home just with some basic supplies. What you're going to need is a nice curved needle like this one, and then a sewing machine needle like this. This is a size 17. You're going to need some thread. You're going to want to make sure that it's the color you know, of the seat that you're sewing up. This is size 92, bonded polyester. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers and just some scissors. Now, if you don't have any of these supplies, I'm going to put a link in the description below with all the information and where you can buy them. So let's get started. So all we're going to do is take a nice long section of thread here. I would say this is probably about two, three feet. We're going to first put the thread through the curved hook. Once we get it through the eye of the needle, we're just going to tie this off. Okay, and once we get that done, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to look to see, you know, where the, the, the seam is actually stopped, you know, and it's still sewed together. And we're going to want to come back, you know, where it's still pretty good. And we're going to try and find a hole. We want to make sure that we're going through all the existing holes while we're doing this repair. It's going to be really important to do that so that you can't see this repair at all. And it's a little bit difficult with all this, uh, it's got this scrim foam on the back here, so it can be kind of difficult to find a hole. So I'm going to come back over here, find a hole, and poke it through. Now this leather, it's really tough stuff, so it can be kind of difficult, and that's where I like to use the needle nose pliers to push this through. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring our thread about halfway so that it's right in the middle. And then I'm going to come back on the bottom and I'm going to find the hole directly backwards from where we just sewed. And I'm going to push this back up through to the top side. Alright, so once we're back through the top, what we want to do is go back through the same hole that we started on. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to pull this tight and make a really nice lock. And I'm also, when I'm poking the needle through, I'm kind of spreading the seam apart so I can actually see in make sure that the needle is going through both holes on the top and the bottom fabric. Alright, and once we have that through like that, we're going to pull this tight 
and you can see that's already cinching down really nicely right there. All right, now what we're going to do is take our top thread and we're just going to put it through the eye of the sewing needle here. And that's it. We're not going to tie this off. We're not going to, you know, do anything because what we're going to start to do is we're going to take this top needle and we're going to push it through all of the existing holes and we're going to push this thread down there like that and then what we're going to do is take our bottom thread with our hook needle and we're just going to stick it through that loop when we come down and then we're going to pull it back up and what that's going to do is make a seam identical to the one that was here originally it's the same type of seam that your sewing machine will make so it's it's fairly straightforward um, it can be kind of a lot of work just because we're doing it by hand but I wanted to show you guys how to do this because it's a good skill to have alright so we're gonna start directly on the next hole You can see here how I'm pushed all the way through. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit so that it makes that nice loop for us. And then all we're going to do is take our hook, go straight through like that. We're going to pull this needle up. And then we're going to pull our threads tight. And you can see that that's going to start to pull this whole seam back together. So we're going to find our next hole again. Looks like we got some old thread here. I'm going to cut that piece off just to get it out of our way. Again, we're pulling that tight. Notice how I'm always feeding the thread through to the back side of the needle. This is important because once you pull the bottom thread to the top side, you're not going to be able to get the needle out because it's going to be trapped on the other side of the thread that you just put through that loop. So you can see how this seam, it's already starting to come together. One other thing is this seam here has this listing on the back side and this, what this does actually is there's a rod that goes through here and we hog ring this down to the seat and that's what kind of holds and makes the nice contour for the bolsters and stuff. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's not folding over while we're sewing uh, otherwise we won't be able to put the rod back through so just be aware of that. Alright, so I'm just going to finish up sewing this seam here 
And then when I get to the end, I'm going to show you guys how to finish this off. Okay, so now that we've got this seam all the way closed, it's really important that you go quite a few stitches past where the seam started ripping apart because what you want to do is make sure that you capture the old threads and get those really tight into the new seam that you're making because you don't want that the rest of the seam to start unraveling after we put all this work into fixing this section here. So I'm just going to go a couple more stitches. Alright, and once we're ready to lock this stitch and finish it off here, what we're going to do is we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of extra thread here on the outside on our top thread. And what we're going to do is go back one more hole and push it through. Might be a little bit difficult because this hole is getting a little full with all the thread. Then we're just going to push our bottom thread straight through like we've been doing. Pull our needle back up. Alright, and this time what we're going to do, we're going to remove our needle. We're going to cut off the needle from the bottom here because what we want to do is pull this thread through to the top side. So you can see here how I have the bottom thread is poking through. So we just want to make sure that we don't lose that. And all I'm going to do is pull that through just like this. Here we go. Now we have both our threads on top here. And what we're going to do is just tie a couple knots. We're going to want to make sure that all of our seam is nice and tight like we want it before we finish this off. Just don't pull too hard to where you break the threads. We're just going to tie a couple regular square knots. Alright, now what we can do is just trim down the thread a little bit. We're going to leave that there and then we're going to open this up and see what it looks like on the front. Alright, so look at that. You can't even see that there was a repair done here. The seam feels nice and strong. It's not pulling apart. So now we could go ahead and install this back on the seat and be done with it. But since this was kind of a lot of work on the other two seams that we have to repair, I'm going to show you how to do it on a sewing machine. All right, now we can move on to the backrest cover. And now that we have the cover off, what I want to do is point out to you guys why this actually happened. And it's because the leather here shrunk from sitting in the sun so much. You can see how hard and rigid it is. And you can actually see that, you know, the leather it actually shrunk quite a bit right here and that's what made all that stress right there and pulled that seam apart. And it actually happened on both of these pieces here. It's a little bit worse on this section here in the middle. Um, this is again the section of the seat that's sitting right underneath the window and it's getting really hot all the time and it's drying out. So what we need to do is soften this back up. Now I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to do this, but I'm gonna warn you that, you know, this isn't 
going to be as good as if you actually replaced this panel, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you guys how we can actually soften this leather back up so that we can get by and sew this back together. The first thing we need to do is be able to access the back of the leather. And I already cut open the scrim foam here so that we can access the back side of this leather here. But I also want to treat this area right here too. So we need to cut open this scrim foam in the same over here so that we can uh, get some softener back here and we can soften up all these pieces of leather. All right, so now that we have this open, we can kind of see, you know, the areas that are shrunk and that we need to, you know, soften up again so we can try and use this leather for our seat cover. What we're going to do is we're going to make a mixture of 50% rubbing alcohol, 25% dish soap, and 25% water. And I'm gonna put it inside just a little spray bottle. Now I'm not being exactly precise here, you just wanna get it close to 50% alcohol, 25% water, and 25% soap. So I'm gonna shake this up real good now. And then, next thing what we wanna do is we're just gonna wet down the back side of the leather here, and we're slowly gonna rub it in to all these sections that we want to soften up. And while we're doing that, what we're going to do is start to sort of massage this leather, pull it out and stretch it. And you're actually going to be really surprised at how fast this works. We're just going to let this soak in. So now what we're going to do is start to try and stretch this leather back out. And you can, you'll be able to feel that it's already starting to work quite well. And you really want to focus on the areas that have stretched out the most. And basically all this is doing is the alcohol is just kind of penetrating the leather and uh, making those fibers relax up again because sitting in the sun for so long it just got so tight and everything shrank up you know and there's just no more moisture inside this leather anymore okay we're gonna let this sit for a little while and we're gonna come back to this and see what it looks like so I just want to flip it over and see you know if it's getting close to where we need it to be. And you can see, you know, how much uh, more pliable this leather is getting already. You know, this is really, really good here. I think if we keep working at this, it's gonna come out really nice. Now that we've got our leather somewhat stretched out, um, I think we're ready to start sewing this back together. I mean, you can see that it's not perfect, but it's much better than it was before and uh, I think we're going to be able to make this work pretty well. Before I start sewing this back together, what I'm going to do is just remove some of the stitching on this piece here all along down to here so that basically I can get in here and do a nice seam repair all the way down and then we'll come back and sew this back on. Okay, so one of the things I like to do when I'm doing a seam repair like this is I like to sew the seam allowance up just a little bit tighter and what that's going to do is make sure that we don't have any of the existing holes showing. So it's going to look much better if we do that and basically I'm just going to come in, I'm going to sew a little bit tighter and then I'm going to come past where the seam ripped open and I'm going to come right back in and do a lock stitch on top of the old seam and what that's going to do is it's going to lock in our new stitch and it's also going to lock in the old stitch so that doesn't come apart at all. So I'm just going to start sewing and we want to make sure you know that we're not sewing any wrinkles 
into the piece so we need to make sure that everything's getting sewn up nice and even. All right, so let's fold this seam open and see if we need to make any adjustments. So it looks like I didn't sew it quite tight enough right here. So you can see how we still have some of the old holes showing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back in here and sew this up a little bit tighter and we should be good to go. All right, so let's check that one more time. All right, that's looking much better. Now we just need to sew this piece back on. So you can see that there's these little notches from the factory, and I'm just trying to make sure these line up while I'm sewing this back on, because we wanna make sure this piece lines up like it did before so that we can get it on those hooks on the back of the seat. Now I'm just going to glue this foam back in place with some spray can adhesive. Okay, before we put on the cover, I'm going to install these things that hold the, the slide for the headrest. And you might be wondering why we're doing that now, because when we were taking them off, the foam in the cover was still on. Well, basically, these things, they're pretty difficult to remove when you're taking off the cover because they have these clips. They go in and they clip into place. You have to get them off to get to the back side of these little clips so you can release them. But when you're putting them in, it's super easy. All you do is just stick the plastic thing through the hole on the cover and they clip in by themselves. So we're gonna install these right now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna glue back down this piece of fabric that we pulled up to get to the back of these bolts here. I'm just going to use some contact cement and a paintbrush. Now we can put the foam on and start installing the cover. All right, and once we have our cover centered up where we like it, we're just going to take our hog ring pliers and some hog rings and we're just gonna hog ring this cover back down the same way we pulled it off. Okay, now I'm just pushing the headrest slides down into the cover after we installed it and you can see that they just click right into place. All I'm doing is using my pick tool here to help slide the cover around the slides.
If you guys want to learn more about upholstery, make sure you check out our online courses that go way into depth into everything you'd want to know about learning upholstery right here in this corner.